I hate shooting on studio backdrops. I think they're boring, I think they're ugly, and there's so much more that you could do with it. That, 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 that is blasphemous! But there is one key factor that makes studio shooting so much more efficient, and that's frankly just the ability to crank out a ton of content in a short period of time. Well, we've managed to marry the look of on location with the efficiency of in-studio shooting, and that's what we use for our short form content for our clients. Last year, we started really focusing on short form content as a branch of Creative Edge Concepts, and this has allowed us to really help our clients crank out regular, consistent daily content, which can be really overwhelming to think about shooting 30 videos in a month. But we found a workflow that's worked out really, really well. But always the challenge was, are we just going to end up with the same backdrop? Is it just going to be a boring location? And, and we really wanted to give some variety to it uh, without, again, creating that additional workflow. We didn't want to have to set up and tear down at two, multiple locations. We wanted to be able to have our clients come in and out so we could provide kind of the, the most cost effective route for them as, as possible. And using this workflow, we've managed to shoot an entire month's worth of content in as little as half a day. Our AR wall has allowed us to be able to continue continuously freshen up that background every single time. We do multiple backgrounds on a shoot and all we have to do is generate a new one. We use Mid Journey as backgrounds. Again, we could use stock images or, or video background plates, but Mid Journey allows us to really nail down exactly the look we want. Uh, maybe we want a modern office. Maybe we want a skyscraper. Maybe we want a park. Maybe uh, we want a nice living room. Doesn't matter, we can find a backdrop and then we can really customize it to have the right angle, the right look, the right lighting to be exactly the right way. Now, from an efficiency standpoint, I, I try to make it so that the key light's always coming from the same directions. I try to match exactly what's happening. So I might adjust the height if necessary or the color temperature. If it's an evening background, I'll dial it to more cool. And if it's a golden hour or, or uh, indoor light, I might warm that light up a bit. So I'm trying to match and, and get the lighting to look as close as possible. Of course, using a projector as an AR wall means that you have to control the lighting. You have to keep it off of that background. Otherwise, you're going to wash out your image really, really quickly. And so we have grids across our lights and we have uh, a large 4x8 four four floppy that allows us to control that key light. And probably the most important lighting tool is uh, our bounce. We just bring in a white bounce. Instead of adding more lighting, we're able to control that bounce and bring in the amount of fill. And I adjust that fill based upon the ambient light of the background. If it's a contrast to your scene, I might pull the fill off. But if it's a nice evenly lit office uh, that's nice and bright, I'll bring that fill in to try and get it to match as best as possible. So since these are shorts and we're shooting vertically, we actually do run into a problem where we could see the, the bottom of the screen. Even though it's 150 inch screen, it's still not huge. It's not Mandalorian level volume. So in order to kind of mask that out, we actually have a nice table that we place in front of the talent. It gives them something to lean on, to interact with, to put their branded cup in front of if they want to. And it's it's there for multi-purpose. It allows them, sometimes you know, they like to lean on it, but it also creates a, a kind of a, a mask in front of where the bottom of the screen would be. And that way we don't run into problems with revealing the fact that it's a screen. So typically we'll have our talent do three main wardrobe changes throughout the entire shoot and then during that we'll change out the background and I'll mix it up. I'll sometimes have an evening scene or a daytime scene or whatever. I'll, I'll mix it up depending on what they might be talking about or just to freshen up that look. And if you look at their TikTok feeds you can see there isn't just one look over and over and over again. We're able to kind of mix it up and it's it's a really neat effect and this allows us to give whatever client that we have whatever look that they want and again we're not compromising. We're not green screening this which would take a lot more time and energy and budget for post-production, uh, we can do it right in camera and get it perfect every single time. And our clients can just come in crank out their shorts and be on their way. It's just a really, really efficient workflow. Now, another tool that we use a ton in our virtual production is our Kessler Crane motion control gear. I'm a huge fan of it. I've been using it for so many years and their Cine Shooter system integrates so well into virtual production. We even did a tutorial video on how to do it and you can check it out on their YouTube channel. Kessler Crane was even kind enough to give our audience a discount code. And if you go to their website and type in Creative Edge, you can get 10% off your next order. Now, if you're saying, what the heck is all this virtual production talk? Well, I'm glad you asked. I put together an entire video that explains the history of virtual production, what makes it so amazing, the different workflows for it, and how to set up your own virtual production studio. And you can check out that video right on over here.